This is going to be a study on the truth about sin. Number one, sin is pleasurable. Hebrews eleven twenty four through 25 says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Looking at the horrible act that David committed, we can see some truth about sin. We can see truths about how sin is pleasurable, yet it only lasts for a time. Second Samuel eleven two says, And it came to pass in, eve, in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And we can already ask two questions. Why wasn't David doing something more productive? And why was Bathsheba bathing, bathing where someone could see her? Maybe there's two guilty parties before the sin even happens. Second Samuel 11.3 says, And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Notice that David knew she was married, but went through with it, even though he knew that she was married. And Second Samuel 11.4 says, And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in and to him, and he lay with her, for she was purified for, from her uncleanness, uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Notice that this sinful act was over and done with in three verses. The pleasure lasted for a time, but it had horrible consequences that affected the rest of his life. The pleasures of sin only last for a season. In this case, it lasted three verses. There is pleasure in sin, and that is one reason why we are so tempted to do it. And the only thing is, the pleasure only lasts for a season. It only lasts for a little while. There is no lasting happiness connected with sin. If you are a drunk, drinking may be fun for a while. It may impress your friends for a while. It may bring you happiness a while. But the end of that is a fat belly, bad liver, an addiction that has its hands wrapped around your flesh, and what you thought was fun ended up being your enemy. And what you thought was fun ended up causing you to beat your wife, hit your kids, spend money you don't have, and ruin your entire family. It may be fun to fornicate for a while. It may be fun to shack up and commit adultery for a while. But take heed what the Bible says. Flee fornication. When you commit fornication, you sin against your own body. And when you commit fornication, the spirits in the body of the other person can attach themselves to you. And not only that, but a woman can carry a sexual partner's DNA in her body for the rest of her life. Every time you commit fornication, you become one flesh with that person. It may be pleasurable in the moment, but the end is STDs. The end is unwanted pregnancies. And that just leads to other sins like abortion. It's not worth it to fornicate with a woman you aren't married to. Get married. The Bible says it is better to marry than to burn. And that means you would be better off getting married than living in lust. And Jesus said, Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And for some reason a wicked man may find it pleasurable to cheat on his wife. Flirting with women at work is wicked. It's a sin to flirt. Flirting leads to fornication. And flirting leads to perverted sexual fantasies that will lead to fornication and adultery. Why would you betray your wife and flirt with another woman? Uh, James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So you don't have to do these things. You can get help from God if you're a Christian. And pray that ye enter not into temptation. Don't put yourself in a situation where you are tempted to break the simple command of Thou shalt not commit adultery. You say, well, that's Old Testament. But the Apostle Paul also preached against adultery and called it a work of the flesh. There are men who go to work every day 
and cheat on their wives. They cheat in the mind, and after work physically they cheat because sin is pleasurable. But the end of adultery is a broken home, broken hearts for the kids and the wife. And as I see married men flirt with women at work, I always think to myself that they aren't thinking. What they are doing is purely for pleasure. What they are doing is going to have to be in a secret place. No good can come from it. Their fantasy or expectation of what they are doing is really unrealistic. It is like they think something good can come from their affair. And no one comes out better. Things come out worse every time. The pleasure of sin only lasts for a season. Then it's over. The heartache and pain last forever. They aren't thinking about their family, their testimony, their brothers and sisters in Christ. The things you do affect other people. And Romans fourteen seven says, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. The sins you commit affect your family, and they affect other Christians. The sinful things you do for pleasure aren't going to be a lasting pleasure. But number two, sin isn't just pleasurable, sin is painful. As I said, people don't consider the end of their sinful pleasures. They don't realize the pain. And I also mean pain in the flesh. God can take this child, his child through hell on earth with pain. And the man in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 was turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. God can let the devil tear your body down. To the point you feel like he is stabbing you with knives all over your body. There is pain involved with sin and you'll pay for sin here on earth. It can also bring pain to other saints. No man liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself as I just got through quoting that verse. Notice what David's sin did to a married couple. David was worried because Bathsheba was pregnant and in an effort to cover up his affair with Bathsheba, he murders her husband Uriah the Hittite. Look at 2 Samuel eleven six. It says, And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house, and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down into his house, David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down into thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest, and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and on the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass, when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. So David's pleasurable sin, that only lasted for a short time, ended up with him murdering Uriah. It ended with him caught trying to get Uriah drunk. It ended with him putting Uriah on the forefront of the hottest battle, and the sin caused pain to everyone involved. Bathsheba was sad about the loss of her husband. Uriah lost his life, and David now has to live with this smudge on his life. Look at what God says about David in 1 Kings 15.5. It says, Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Sin brings nothing but pain to everything and everyone around it. Adam and Eve sinned, so Eve had to have painful childbirth, and Adam would have to feel pain in his body just to feed his own face. He had to work for food. Imagine if David hadn't committed that sin. 
that verse in First Kings fifteen five, that last part wouldn't be on there. And when other Christians sin, it makes it hard and painful for other Christians. It can make the ministry harder even. Uh, Philippians 1.16 talks about those who add affliction to Paul's bonds. Paul was imprisoned, and some preachers on the outside were preaching with contention and making the ministry harder on Paul. It can be painful in this world as a Christian. Other Christians can make it more painful by ruining the lost world's perception of Christians even more by seeing the Christian sin. It can give lost people occasion to blaspheme. And that is what David did. He gave the lost people occasion to blaspheme. Second Samuel twelve fourteen says, Howbeit, by, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of, of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And when a Christian messes up and sins, lost people and atheists will blaspheme God by mocking the Christian and the God he serves. So sin is pleasurable. Sin is painful. And number three, sin is patient. I bet David didn't just wake up and decide to commit adultery out of nowhere. It probably took a long process of wicked thinking to get him to this point, And he was sitting around idle instead of doing something productive. He wasn't reading his Bible. He was watching Bathsheba. Sin is patient and, it, and he was tempted with a little sin here, a little sin there, until he finally did the act of adultery. Notice he watched Bathsheba before he even took her. He had to stop and lust before he did the act. Then he asked someone who she was. And they told him that it was another man's wife. But yet he took her anyway. He had to think about committing adultery before he went through with the act. And many sins can take a while before they hook you. A man can start out as a young boy looking at pornography. And over time this sin gets a little worse and a little worse and a little worse until it has its arms and its legs wrapped around the center cutting off his circulation. And you know Satan is a serpent. And many Christians are addicted to porn. They think they are getting away with it. Ecclesiastes 8.11 says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Uh, that means just because God isn't judging you right off doesn't mean he's not going to and people think that since they're not being judged right away that they're getting away with it nobody's getting away with anything sometimes god won't punish a person for sin and this causes them to stay in the sin even longer and they think they're getting away with it if you look at hosea 4 and verse 14 it says i will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom nor your spouses when they commit adultery, for themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore the people that doth not understand shall fall. You're not getting away with looking at pornography. That lust will kill you. And the Bible says, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. You're living for that dead flesh. This sin leads to more sin. Check out the stories of these pedophiles and serial killers. It started with a magazine a laptop, a closed bedroom door that the parents never opened, and these serial killers get to a point where porn wasn't enough. They begin to desire more bizarre and strange ways to get that high. They begin to get a bloodlust. Uh, sin is patient. It may take a while to completely take over, but it will take over your life. And number four or five, sin is punishable. No doubt about it, David was punished for his sin, David had to face Nathan the prophet about what he had done. Nathan stuck his finger in his face and said, Thou art the man. Sometimes humiliation is a horrible punishment. Think about how humiliating it would be for your Christian friends to see you do what you're doing. If you're a pastor of a church and committing adultery, imagine how humiliating it would be if the congregation found out what you're doing. I was on visitation with my pastor once and a man was trying to show my pastor a picture of his grandson or granddaughter on his phone and when he opened up the phone it showed a picture of a naked woman the pastor saw it to my surprise this man came to church the following sunday despite the embarrassment of my pastor seeing the porn on his phone but you're going to be found out about what you're doing nobody's getting away with anything 
David was also punished when God took his child. Your sin affects your kids. And there are many parents who are paving the way for their kids to go to hell. So sin is punishable. If you're not saved and you don't get those sins under the blood, then you will die in those sins. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Revelation 21.8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You say, well, I'm saved and I've told a lie. Am I going to hell? No, the verse said all liars. If you're saved, then technically you're not a liar. In the spiritual sense, God sees you as righteous as Jesus Christ. You have the spiritual circumcision. Those sins of the flesh aren't applied to your soul, but they can still kill you. They can leave you without rewards and ruin everything you have. Moses smote the rock twice. And disobeyed God and didn't get to go into the promised land. Samson couldn't control his eyes and he rebelled against God and had his eyes gouged out. David lost a child because he committed adultery. Adam and Eve lost a sinless body and got kicked out of the garden for disobeying God. Sin is punishable, it's painful, and you're going to reap what you sow. Uh, the next one is sin is paraded. Ever heard of a gay pride parade? Ever heard of Mardi Gras? Ever heard of the Ellen Degeneres show? That is sin on parade. Facebook is sin on parade. If you're a Christian with Facebook and you watch wicked TV shows, don't parade the sin across the internet for everyone to see you watching that TV show. Some Christians will put on there, I listen to wicked music. Uh, don't tell the world what music you're listening to if you're listening to sinful music. Nothing wrong with Facebook if you use it the right way, but if you drink beer, don't parade it with selfies. It's one thing to commit the sin, it's another thing to parade the sin. Romans 6.21 says, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? If you're not ashamed of those sins, then your conscience is seared. And David didn't start feeling as bad about the sin until he found out Nathan knew about it. Don't wait to get right and be ashamed of what you're doing until someone else knows get rid of it before anybody knows don't just be sorry you got caught you need to repent now and get it right now if you're flirting with a woman at work then get that thing right before it's too late david didn't feel that bad about what he did he kept it a secret thought it was under the rug but god but what god did to him he did before israel Second Samuel twelve ten through 12 says, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of his son, in the sight of this son, for thou didst it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel, and before the son and the lastly sin has a payment according to the law david should have died because he committed adultery and murder however he had the sure mercies of david second samuel twelve thirteen says and david said unto nathan i have sinned against the lord and nathan said unto david the lord also hath put away thy sin thou shalt not die the same thing happens for us when we get saved we should die and go to hell for what we've done but God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross and to be our payment. He is the payment for sin. He pays our sin debt. Sin has a payment. Our sins have been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you believed on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And then in Acts twenty twenty eight. It says that he purchased us with his own blood. So if you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner you are. Believe on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, and you can be saved and have eternal life.